Let me show you how to sketch this cubic polynomial the pre-calculus way. That is, we will find the y-intercept, the x-intercept, the sign chart, and then also the end behavior. So let's get started. Let's do the y-intercept first. For this, we'll just let x equal to 0, plug in, and then find out y. p of x is the y, and we'll just have y is equal to negative 1, but I'll show you guys the word. Negative 0 to the third power plus 0 square plus 0 and then minus 1, which is just negative 1. Y intercept 0, comma negative 1. Done. Next, we have the x intercept. For this, we will let y to be 0, plug in, and we get 0 is equal to negative x to the third power plus x squared plus x minus 1. And we just have solved that. Notice that this right here has four terms. Let's do factor by grouping. It's actually factorable too, so that's really nice. However, though, the leading coefficient here is negative 1. Hmm, I don't like that too much. I want to factor that out. So check this out. We have 0. Let me just factor out negative for whole thing right here. So this right here will be positive x to the third power, and then it will be a negative x squared, and then it will be a negative x, and then this will be a positive 1, like that. You pretty much just change all the signs. Now, let's do factor by grouping. First two terms, and then the last two terms. Here we still have 0, we still have this negative, big parentheses right here. For these two terms, we can factor out an x squared. Good. And then we have that x minus 1. Next, when we do factor by grouping, we will have to maintain this sign right in the middle. So keep that in mind, this is a minus. And I'm just going to factor out negative 1 because I'm going to put down parentheses. So technically, that's a factoring out a negative 1. So originally, this was a negative x. Now it will be just an x inside. Here is positive 1, factoring out negative 1, so we have minus 1. So this and that, they do match very nicely. All right, and 0 is equal to this negative. This and that, I'll factor it right here, x minus 1. This and that in red, that's x squared minus 1. Like that. Notice that this parentheses, we don't need it anymore. And we'll just get, uh, get rid of that later. And uh, for this, we can actually factor it more. So this is negative, this parentheses, x minus 1. Factoring out this, we get x minus 1 times x plus 1. And finally, we get this and that happening twice. So we have 0 is equal to negative parentheses x minus 1 squared and then x plus 1. So this right here is the factorative form of the original. But if you look at this right here, we can find the zeros. Make the first factor equal to 0, we get x is equal to 1. Make the second factor equal to 0, we get x is equal to negative 1. So we actually have two x-intercepts. And that's quite strange because we have a cubic function, right? Don't worry, because the multiplicity of this is 2. So this is happening twice. So altogether, we technically have 1, 1, and negative 1, 3, 0, if you include a repetition. But anyway, though, x and y intercepts are done. Now let's go to the sign chart. Why not? Let's do the sign chart. And for the sign chart, I'm just going to look at this and negative 1 is smaller, so I'm just going to start with negative 1 right here. And then we have 1. And look at the factorative form of the polynomial. So this right here is p of x. And then we factor this right here. So we get that negative x minus 1 squared and then x plus 1. And here we go. Pick a number less than negative 1, let's say negative 2. Put it here. Well, this is negative. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3 squared is positive. Negative 1 right here, right? So it's negative times positive times negative. Altogether, we get positive. So you can just do that. If not, you can also just write down some computations on your own. Here we have this negative. And then next, when you put this in here, this square is positive. And lastly, when you put this right here, negative 2 plus 1, as I said earlier, is negative 1, which is negative. Altogether, we get positive, just like that. So, I think that's uh, 
pretty good. You don't have to compute the exact value. Right. Next, pick a number between negative 1 and 1 that says 0. This is negative, this is positive, and that's positive, right? So negative times positive times positive when we have that. Altogether, we get negative. And then, pick a number bigger than 1 that says 2. This is negative. 2 in here is 1. Square is positive. In here is positive. All multiply, we get negative. So, that's how you do the sign chart. Now, let's talk about the end behavior. So, let's say the end behavior. You just look at left and right, that's all. Because this right here is when x is going to negative infinity. That means when we look all the way to the left. If it's positive, then y will be approaching positive infinity. Because for polynomial graphs, there's no horizontal asymptote. It's either going up or going down like that the other way. So, as x goes to negative infinity, we get y will be approaching positive infinity. On the other hand, if we look this direction, as x goes to positive infinity, right, all the way to the right, then we know y goes to negative infinity. This tells you the negative infinity. This tells you the direction. All right? And lastly, here is the sketch. Right, so I'm just going to do this. I will do my best. Check this out. Two zeros, negative one and one. So these are the x-intercepts, right? The two zeros, like this and like that. And we also have the y-intercept zero comma negative one. So let me just say it's right here. So the curve must cross this, this, and that. Keep that in mind. Okay, when x is approaching negative infinity. The y is approaching past infinity, so the end behavior on the left is like this, right? It's like going up like that. And then the other end behavior is y will be going to negative infinity, so it will be going down like this. And now we just have to figure out what's in the middle. Well, in the middle is negative, right? And also we have to make sure that it crosses this point and then come back here. And make sure you don't have any sharp turns. The graph of a polynomial has to be, you know, curvy and nice smooth all that stuff so i will just go down like this touch that and then come back down maybe i'm not sure if this is a minimum or not though so i cannot guarantee that but it does have to be like this maybe just don't want to give you guys a wrong idea so unfortunately for pre-calculus we don't know how to find the local min or local max without a calculator so right now if you just give me this shape this is totally okay so positive below negative and then below right below the x-axis also negative negative so this kind of shape is okay i'm not sure what's happening here but again this is good that's it